All right, let's start. Uh, so you remember from before the statistics, there was one issue with 155 comments. I think it's the one that Thomas Schurvel started <laughs> almost two years ago. And so today he's going to talk about this issue. Thank you very much you. for the kind introduction. Hello, everyone. So yes, I want to talk about Nixup. Uh, Nixup is a declarative way of managing your user environment. And what it basically is, it's copying the way how we manage the NixOS operating system into and use the same method that we love to actually manage our home user environment. So we have a central configuration file where we write down which packages we want to have installed, which services should be running, and which resources or files we want to have linked into our home directory, and then a set of tools to instantiate this user profile. And as you've already heard, the idea is rather old. So I remember people talking about it back in 2014. Nicholas then implemented the first, um, uh, the first idea. And then I opened this long-standing pull request, which by now has 150 comments and 60 participants. And it, last year it already had enough attention so that Peter had to mention it in his April Fool's joke. And finally, by the beginning of this year, Robert Helgeson, he, he published or announced a real implementation of it called Home Manager. And so when, when I heard about this conference, I thought, what do I do about this pull request? Should I actually just work on it and pick it up? And so I wondered, is it worth the effort? Are people really interested into this feature? And so I have this problem. I went through this pull request, and I saw a lot of comments, and people liked it. And I had a lot, lot of thumbs up and likes, and I thought, but they're so cheap. Are people really willing to put their money where their mouth is? And so I thought, could I just ask them to donate money to the Nixos Foundation just for me to measure how, how real the interest really is? And so it, the result was that in the end, around 20 people donated or pledged 650 euros. So a big thanks to all of you who did that. But for me, it wasn't conclusive what I should do in the end. If it would have been 100 people, I would have said, yes, people love it. So I should really do it. And if it would have been just 50 euros, I would have said, well, apparently it's just me. Um, and I would have dropped it. But this result somehow left me in between. And then I thought, well, Thomas, come on, just do it. And so, and so the overall design was very clear for me from the beginning. There is home manager, and so I reached out to Robert and said, can we somehow join forces? Because I didn't want to start another project. Uh, and so he said, yes, we should. And so I could just focus on this deep embedding into NixOS, which home manager so far has not. And so with a little bit of luck, by the end of the workshop next week, you should have an option, NixUp enable within your NixOS uh, configuration. And the, your configuration file should go or will go into config nixup profile.nix. And then with a little bit of luck, nixup rebuild switch should do its job and present you all the features that I described before. The content of the uh, uh, profile.nix is something that, you should, uh, that you're probably familiar with from the nixos configuration itself. So you can write down which packages you want to have, which files should be linked into your home directory, or which services should be running. Maybe systemd services might be switched to user services. I don't know yet, but in the end, it's very standard. The only thing that took a little bit more effort for me was this part here. So linking files into the home directory is something I'm very careful about because you link, you have the user's home directory, and I link things in when I switch to a certain profile. And if I switch away from the profile, I somehow want to remove these links or data that I copied again. And so this is something where I had to be sure that I'm not accidentally deleting stuff, files that the user actually cared about. And so to solve this, or my idea was that I implemented a way of adding extended file system attributes to every file that I generated or that I linked. Uh, and I tagged them with 
a hash of the path relative to its home directory and the initial content. So that afterwards, if you would change the content of the file, if you, or if you would move it around, this could be detected when switching away from this profile so that this content in the, uh, from the user is actually protected and preserved. For generating the files, you will get a few options as well. The first one is that sources can be either static or dynamic. Static means that whatever is within the Nix uh, uh, store is just copied or linked into your home directory. Dynamic means that what is stored in the Nix, uh, in the Nix store is more or less a function that is called with a parameter to the file that you, wanna, that you actually want to create. So it means that dynamic sources, they take the current file as input and should generate the new content as output. For the files that are generated, you also have two options. They either can, can be non-volatile, which means they're protected, or volatile, which means... So non-volatile means that if we're switching away, we're checking the hash that we stored against the content that is there at this moment. And if it is not the same, we just stop. Whereas for volatile, we don't care about this initial content and we just remove the file um, as we expected it to change. So these two options, they give you great power, but they also will come with great responsibility. So just be warned. A few more notes about it, about switching the files. So files itself, if, if a file is present in the old and the new profile, we, this file will be switched atomically. So you should all, it should always be there. Symbolic links into the Nix store will always be followed. So before creating the link, we really resolve it to the final target. So either a file or a directory or a dangling link. And um, so this is the one thing, the thing that will be stored or will be created. There is no switching, atomic switching of sets of files because I couldn't give you any uh, particular guarantees on it. The only thing that I can guarantee uh, that is guaranteed is that the order of switching from one profile to the other always deactivates unwanted services, switches the resource files or file resources, and then activates the new services. And the best thing about it, it it's almost done. So I will need a little bit more help about with testing and especially security review and writing documentation. But I'm very confident that within the next two days, this can get done. So thank you very much. And before I stop talking, I <laughs> take the chance to talk about what I want to work on next. So the next thing I want to work on is about managing state within NixOS. So NixOS is this wonderful, purely functional Linux distribution for installing packages. But what about executing the services that you install. So we all know what guarantees do we have that once we want to execute a service that it has actually the right data to operate on. So you always know this procedure, you or this, this, this ha from happening. You upgrade your software, um, a, a database server gets upgraded, it executes for the first time, it upgrades your database, and then for whatever reason you want to roll back and you can't because your data is already newer than the version of your software that you want to switch to. So how can we prevent this from happening? That's the thing that I want to work on in my next project. And the idea is that we, I could, we could maybe just annotate resources within, within our NixOS configuration with some kind of tags, types, that we collect during the build of the new operating system or the configuration and that we check before we activate it for the first time. So this is something that probably requires another conference for me to get started, but that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? 
So in the um, original um, configuration page you showed on the first page, it basically specified a path into the home directory where the nixup config was for that user. What if you wanted to use this with something like nixops, where when you do a nixops deploy, it grabs your configuration file from the local repo and sets up the home user's directory? Again. <laughs> I couldn't. So. Oh, sorry. Um, so um, on the first page of your slide, you showed a, or it might have been the second page, uh, you showed um, uh, da, 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 da. Right, next one, the one with the brown in it. That one there. Nope, yeah. right there. Uh, dot config nix up profile dot nix. Um, so I'm assuming that's basically a file that the user would put in their home yeah. directory. Um, what if you wanted to use this with something like nix ops um, for remote instances mm -hmm. where you wanted to basically manage some files in a single user's home directory? using this tool, but you wanted that declaratively defined in on the, the system where you're actually using it. So, so, so you mean you want to define it in the OS configuration? You want it defined in like um, the deployment.nix file in like nix ops. So basically, instead of having the nix up config file on the system itself, you want the nix up config file defined where you're running nix ops. Yeah, from. I understand. Is that possible or it, no? It's planned. It's planned. So, okay. so now I just want to get it in mm -hmm. and get this basic feature in. And then it should be possible to also have some declarative configuration within uh, the operating system configuration as well. So I think this, I hope without knowing it, but I guess this would resolve this issue as well. OK. Last question. So, yeah, well. well, hello. I have a simple question. Mm -hmm. um, could you summarize what are the limitations of your implementation at the moment? Just summarize limitations. Um, if there are any, as compared to the system way of declaring um, system packages. Uh, I, I'm absolutely sure that there are limitations. Um, could you, which ones are you uh, thinking about? It's okay. Ah. Ah. And that's a very good question. <laughs> um, so, 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 where do I get stuff? Yeah. Um, we will see. We will see. We will see. It's, it's, so the implementation is very new. We need a lot of people to test it. And I think they, they have to, to tell me. Secrets, they are, it's the same issue as putting secrets into the NixOS configuration. So tonight we can talk about it uh, around the drink. Yeah, I think there was one last question. Uh, Over there. Yeah, we kind of running. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.